Um, let's now give the time to our Bible study leader, our pastor, Errol. Is it Pastor Errol? I'll be doing it, Nang. Oh, sorry. So let's now give the time to Pastor Wilmer. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are thankful that, again, we have another day of gathering together and studying the Word of God. Blessing indeed. We have studied several books now, and we are now in the Gospel according to Matthew, and we are in Matthew chapter 11. And if you have any questions, any thoughts lingering uh, uh, that uh, you want to ask, Feel free to ask, or perhaps even after the end of our presentation of this passage. So uh, uh, let us pray first. Do we ask, O oh Lord, we, we ask of your grace and mercy. It's all through Christ Jesus who died for us. And through your grace and mercy, O oh Lord, the Spirit will uh, lead us. Allow us to, as we ponder upon your words, allow us to understand biblical truth, O oh God. It will help us in our walk, in our journey here on earth, as well as when we are serving you, O oh God. May we be able to serve you according to your will, according to your ways, O oh Lord, not according to our own. That's this time of study, and lead us in the life of John the Baptist, as uh, Christ Jesus speaks about this man in this passage, we will learn about the truth in his life and how God is honored in his life. And may we imbibe it, may we follow it, we praise you that we could have this time together. Amen. So Christ Jesus, in the latter passage, he called his apostles out of several people following him. He identified 12 that he sent specifically on the towns that are Jewish and they are to avoid uh, Samaritan or not Jewish towns or cities. And uh, they are to carry and proclaim the message. They are there to uh, speak about uh, the kingdom of God, to give evidence, they perform miracles. Uh, they uh, they did, they did, uh, they did do the missionary work, and there was warning about what kind of life they will go through as they serve God, and uh, even encouragement of of the rewards that God has prepared for those who who serves him, who chooses to serve him. It's allegiance, a pledge of allegiance, a pledge of love, a pledge of uh, care for that person, okay? Uh, if that person is uh, serving Jesus. So uh, as he was speaking to his disciples, his 12 disciples, uh, the apostles, he went to their cities, teaching in their own cities. And John, who were in, in uh, the prison that time, heard about the news about the Lord Jesus Christ, what he was doing, teaching, preaching, performing uh, miracles. He sent word from his disciples. And there were followers of John the Baptist. And even when he was in prison, he, he, could, he communicated with them. Uh, maybe they visited him or... Perhaps there's, God has made a way for his disciples to uh, be able to still talk to him. And John sent two to bring a question. Are you the one who is to come or shall we look for another? It's an inquiry of, are you the Christ? Are you the Messiah? Now, we're, you have to understand he was in prison. 
yes, he was called by God specifically to be the front runner. He will declare the Lord Jesus Christ and now a privilege of baptizing Christ Jesus. He doesn't know him, but the time that Christ Jesus showed up, he was able to recognize that this is Christ, the Messiah, the one that I have told everyone that even the, the latchet, the, 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 the strings of the sandals, I did not touch because he's, he's above me, he's God, he's holy. Uh, yet he had the privilege to baptize him and saw him and heard the voice of God the Father. This is my beloved son whom I am well pleased and saw a sight, a, a wonderful sight. Uh, it, it endowed upon Christ Jesus. And he sent his apostles saying, uh, he sent his disciples saying, are you the one who is to come? Are you the one who is appointed? Are you the one who is the Messiah, the Christ? Are you the one who is to come? He, there's a, a uh, you, you can see a tinge of frustrations possibly, or uh, being saddened or eager, eagerness. This is, this cannot wait to see the Christ and what he will do, uh, how he's going to save everyone, deliver everyone from the, the power of uh, the tyrants, the power of this Roman uh, worldwide uh, enslavers, okay, they're conquerors. And, and John is asking, are you the one to come to deliver us? See, when you are in, in the shoe of John the Baptist, you maybe cannot blame him. I've uh, seen a lot. I haven't been to a prison house, but I've seen a lot of prison house here uh, in the Philippines. Uh, it's deplorable. I'm telling you, deplorable. It's not a good place to live. A place to stay you you are blustered you are crowded thrive in one area and everything you do there it's sickness and all sort of <laughs> yet it's it's a modern day prison how much more in if i'm an apostle of this prophet john the baptist can you imagine what kind of jail they have what kind of prison cell they have it could be a cave, or, or, or it could be a, a ditch. Throw the people there, smelly, maybe dead people, dead animals. And it's frustrating. It's frustrating that he has to end up in a jail. He was a forerunner. He was the one who announced the coming of this Christ, Jesus and yet he end up on a smelly, inhumane kind of place. He was living his life standing in the truth. He was even pronouncing the evilness of the land, the evilness of the leaders of the land, like Herod, who killed his own uh, uh, brother-in-law, a brother, just to get the wife, Herodias. And because of him proclaiming their sinfulness, he was sent to prison. And eventually he will be killed or beheaded. See how, how frustrating could it be when you're living according to what God wants you to live. You are saying or witnessing to others what God wants you to say. You are standing your grounds and yet you are in a bad place possibly a wrong place not a place for god's servant do we question god when when something went goes wrong in our life do we question god when things that we don't desire happens to us sickness maybe covid 19 Maybe may death in the family, death of a loved ones, loss of a job, loss of strength, loss of 
taste for life or direction of life. Maybe you're in prison because somebody accused you. I hope they're wrong. Maybe they're you are you you are thrown out of, of your place. You're evicted, or even are thrown out the family. I don't know what's happening in your life. But I know the the sheer truth that there's something that's happening in our lives, and sometimes it's. It push us to the limit. And here is John the Baptist to the limit, or perhaps beyond the limit, imprisoned for what? For living for God. Will you be like John the Baptist, like questioning Christ Jesus? Are you the one? No, that's a typical, typical response, a re reaction about a person who is frustrated. Who cannot find anything else? There's no hope anymore. Are you the one? Are you? Why are? Why the things that I'm hoping for are not happening? Why I'm not promoted? Why I don't have a job? Why I don't have a house? Why I'm sick? I'm not healed. Then is uh, the second question. Or shall we look for another? Is there any other hope in any anyone there or anywhere there? Is there another one Christ, another appointed one? Is there another? May is there any other hope? May we can we or may we be able to find that hope? Indeed, it's uh, is is this doubt, perhaps? See, there's even John the Baptist against God by doubting against him by even casting his frustration unto him well the answer Jesus said go tell John go back to John tell John what you hear and see the blind receive their sight the lame walk lepers are healed deaf hear and the dead erased the poor have good news preached to them. Blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Jesus sends that John the Baptist offended by him. So he's telling his disciples, go back to John, witness to him what you see, what you saw, what you experienced. Tell him what you heard. Because if you are a child of God, if you will find joy, real joy, find it in Christ. Be not offended of Christ. Do not question doubt. Do not hate Christ because nothing in in your life is it, happening for you. Everything's against you. See the, the best way to counsel. Comfort those who are frustrated is not to tell them about their wrongs. Right? I would say, no. I remember when I was younger, uh, we watched a old, it was a family oriented movie done in Marsha. And at the end of uh, the, that telecast, the Mother in law will always say, Kasi ikaw dyan, ka. Blaming the, the father, blaming the son in law, all the alterings, all the air in life because of his uh, timid laziness. See, it's not how you confront them with the wrong things. Maybe the best thing to Advice or counsel those who are frustrated or have a, have a lot of hang ups is to see what is God doing in the lives of other people, to see what God's purpose has been unveiled, to hear the word of God. It's not about your what the best words you could have, best advice you could have, but 
the right fitting word of God for those hearts that is in agony, in anguish. So blessed is the one who's not offended by me. So it's it's maybe something to consider when we counsel other people. Don't point to their wrong. Let them see their wrong, but the best thing, let them see we have loving, caring. God is all powerful. See, he, he could glance the lepers. A God who knows our pain and agony. Death here, the better race. A God who knows our needs. The poor have good news preached to them. He didn't say the poor became rich. The poor have good news preached to them. That's the right happening. He went away, the two disciples of John the Baptist, Jesus addressing the crowd. What do you go out in the wilderness to see? It's referring to John the Baptist. A reed shaken by the wind. See, a life that has no, you know, uh, like a reed, like a grass, and it's bulb. It's shaken by the wind. But then did you go out to see a man dressed in soft clothing? He, he refers here to, uh, you know, John the Baptist that he's not wearing soft cloth, clothing, expensive cloth. No. Behold, those who wear cloth, soft clothing are king houses. And uh, the one that wore expensive clothes are the pedestal, king's houses, royal houses. What then did you go out to see? A prophet. Yes, I tell you more than a prophet. Jesus recognized John the Baptist as a prophet. Not just an ordinary prophet. So he, he knows that John was called to proclaim and foretell. He has a mission. And Jesus referred to the word of God. Behold, I send you a messenger before your face who will prepare your way. He prepares the way of the Lord. And here he, he recognized John the Baptist. Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there's no one greater than John the Baptist. That's what he does. His ministry, his mission, so yet the one who lives in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence and violent taken by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come, he who has ears, let him hear. So Jesus recognized here John, the prophet, the one who is... Uh, struggling, the one who is in prison, and he he recognized him, he identified him as greater, a great servant of God. Why? Because he's least the kingdom of God. He is he is nothing in his here on earth. He, he wears camels here. He lives in the wilderness. He did not think about anything that will elevate his physical condition. He didn't ask for it from the poor. Just receive whatever God has given him. Yet God is nice. John the Baptist is a, a person that God has called to place a landmark. Landmark that speaks about the Lord Jesus Christ, and he is that mark. He is that that reminder of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And here it says, "All the prophets and the law prophesied until John. There was no such prophecy from Malachi to the Lord Jesus Christ. The only prophecy that came back was through the time of." John the prophets. After John the prophet, uh, sorry, John the Baptist. After John the prop the Baptist, 
then we have apostles, disciples, or prophets. There's no need of prophecy because Jesus came and he revealed what he wants to reveal. He's the truth. And John is the the, the boundary be, be, between the prophets of the Old Testament and the writings of this Old New Testament by disciples of there's no more prophets, but there are prophets still in Revelations, in, uh, in Peter, First Peter. Right? There's also prophecy in Thessalonians. Uh, there's there's prophetical teachings there, but there's no prophet anymore, right? Because it's a John. And he is considered like Elisha who is to come. So Elisha is about to come back. So that's, that's a picture of a servant of God. He, well, Jesus did not tell this when his apostles were present. I believe he doesn't want his apostles to feel proud about John because the right, the right one to glorify is the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, what I love and appreciate here is that Jesus acknowledges a servant. He knows what is happening to his servant. He understood what is what's going through the servant. And he knows the servant's gonna die. He beheaded. He didn't stop. He didn't broke him out of the prison? No, he didn't. You know, serving God, this is a reminder to those you and I are called to serve God. A reminder to serve to serve God when it's not a comfortable situation anymore. Don't despair. Don't be anxious about it. Because God will allow these things to happen in our lives. God will allow uh, struggles, challenges, and even risk of life as we serve God. A lot of these missionaries or witnesses of God, some of them died, some of them were physically hurt. Okay, they were beaten up. Some of them were, were constantly threatened. And listen, when you serve God, there's joy in serving Jesus, in spite of the pain, in spite of the, the danger. But I'm not saying that we go to the battlefront because it's it's joyous to be in, in a dangerous place. Wherever God calls you, that is your battlefield. If God called you here in Queens, New York, that's your battlefield. God called you in Australia. That is your battlefield. Wherever God will lead you. Yes, it's okay to pray for a place that you would like to serve God. You pray intently, intensely. But God has a better plan because he will bring you to a place where they need Jesus. And what we need to do there is not to complain or, or pout because life is so hard. But rather rejoice that in our journey in serving God, He is with us, never left us. He provided our needs. If there's threat, there's danger, there's there's harm, He's with us. Remember what we said last time: fear, fear not that that kills the body, but rather fear Him that kills the body and soul could. Put it in, in hell. That's the right fear because you are fearing the one true living sovereign powerful God. So in serving Jesus, how how do we respond when we face agony, defeat, failure? 
setbacks, obstacles, it should not be questioning Jesus. Are you the one? Are you the one? No, it should be trust in Jesus. Even the Lord Jesus Christ suffered. He was hurt, beaten up. Man of sorrows. There's no beauty in this. There's no ugliness in him. And it took all the blows, all the shame for you and for me. So if our Savior was able to face all those shaming pain and agony, brutalize them, why can't we? The apostles did it, the disciples did it, because they learned the love of Jesus. Can we do the same when we are afflicted, persecuted? Can we just trust Jesus, trust God? He doesn't make mistakes. Where, wherever he leads you, whatever work you are in, he doesn't make mistakes. It's not you who would improve the work or make it productive or good. It's not you. It's God. He sent us wherever he wants us to be to continue to bring his words, continue to point to others about Jesus. It's not for us to, to see how it will be better, how it will flourish. It is all in the hands of God. And let's just trust God if he leads us. And, and even if our family persecute us, we should not turn our backs on them. It will be normal when family will persecute you and me. Just pray for them. Pray for our unseen loved ones. Again, uh, we are called to serve Jesus. How is our ser service to him? How do we treat all these setbacks, setbacks or failures in our ministry? May we bring it to Jesus. Thank you very much for allowing us to study the Word of God, the life of John the Baptist as Jesus teaching. If you have any question, we will give back the time to our Good morning. Yes, good morning, everyone. Good evening, Philippines. Um, the reason why John was in prison is because he rebuked uh, Herod Antipas when he went to his brother Philip and took his uh, wife. Is that the main reason he got in prison? Hello, can you hear me? Sorry, uh, I was doing some work. Uh, could you repeat the question? Uh, is the main reason why uh, John the Baptizer was in prison is because when Herod Antipas visit his brother Philip uh, somewhere in Rome or where the re, uh, and um, the John the Baptizer rebuked uh, Herod Antipas of doing the wrong thing of taking the, the wife of his brother Philip. Oh, thank you for that, uh, Brother Richard. Yes, uh, it was indicated, uh, even paraphrased there, uh, that indeed he was, uh, you know, he was in prison because of his uh, pronouncement of the evilness of Herod. Uh, he killed his own uh, bloodline and took what is, uh, what is possessed by others. So, indeed, that was one of the reasons. Other than that, uh, I believe is that uh, Herod also feels that he's a threat to the community, a control of community, 
but the uh, primary reason there because of his uh, declaration of the evilness of uh, Herod. Thank you, Brother Richard, for that question. Um, can you consider John the Baptizer the greatest prophet of all? Uh, the greatest prophet of all indeed is Christ Jesus. Christ. He's a prophet, king, and no, 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 he's no, also no. a priest. I, I know I know that the second okay. no, 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 uh, no, no, no. Let, let's just consider that he was he was uh, elated by Christ himself uh, because he was he was obedient, he, he was faithful, uh, he did what was the will of God for him, the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it, it's an, an honor to be recognized by Christ himself. Thank you, Brother Richard, for the question. Good evening, Pastor Wilmer. Good evening. Is this my yet? Yes. Yes. Good. Good morning, Palasa, New York. Good morning. Uh, Pastor, the relationship between uh, Jesus and John the Baptist by flesh, they are relatives, right? Uh, according to history, they are through Elizabeth because Elizabeth has a lineage of uh, Levi as still a lineage of Judah. Yes, and then I uh, I remember the, in Luke 1 that uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, visited Elizabeth when, he, when she was pregnant. And so they are cousins and they know each other jesus and 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 john the baptist so in ba back to our passage yeah he sent his disciples to ask jesus are you the one so does it imply that mary and uh, mary the mother of jesus and mary elizabeth kept the deity of the lord jesus as the, of the lord jesus to them so, Noel. I'm not sure if uh, he kept the, the, the deity, but what we, we know and uh, see in several occasions in the Bible that they uh, did not recognize that he's God. Uh, in fact, he, they were resistant on him preaching. So I think they're not, they, they don't uh, see it in, in him because they see him flesh and blood. But uh, also, there's no relationship, according to the Bible, there's no clear relationship between John and Jesus because uh, they are, let's say, they are apart from each other. Jesus was in, uh, the family of Jesus was in hiding. They are in Galilee and John is with his family in, in Jerusalem, uh, servants in the temple. So I don't think they see each other. There's no occasion in the Bible that, they possibly have uh, seen each other before. Thank you for that question. Thank you. Uh, one more question, Professor Romer. Go ahead, go ahead. How within the family, because uh, the passage tells that they don't, as he, uh, the brothers and sisters of Jesus by flesh, that they only see Jesus and believe that as a flesh, not as God. So that's, so it implies that they don't know the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ, or they are it's because of unbelief. What, what can you say about that? 
Uh, I... Yeah, there were occasions that we could see a clear indication that they don't they don't believe in Jesus as as the Messiah. They well, they maybe Mary and 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 even in the early part of Matthew, she she kept it to herself, uh, maybe because they're afraid or uh, because they look upon Jesus flesh and blood. So uh, no indication that he is royalty or monarch or holy so uh even they mock him by uh telling him in, in luke uh chapter eight i think it's chapter eight i'll, I'll get back to that he said go go to the festival go there because they don't want him to be in their in their hometown he said go to jerusalem go to the festival and jesus said go yourselves but eventually jesus went to uh so there, there are some indications there uh, that with their treatment with Jesus when he was doing his life ministry, that they there's no belief, there's no uh, they don't recognize or endorse him as a Messiah or as Christ. In fact, they want him to stop talking to to the crowd when he was in Galilee. So I don't see from their behavior that they believe in Jesus. The only part that we could find there is in Acts chapter 1 where uh, during the time that Christ was ascended that Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the brothers were with apostles praying. So I think when they saw Christ died and they saw Christ risen from the dead, that attests to uh, like Mary's uh, she learned beforehand that, that Jesus is the appointed one, the Messiah, the Christ, and the brothers have some, you know, some thoughts. Uh, they heard about the word of God, about the Messiah, or perhaps their mother was telling them about the angel's apparition, or you never know. But uh, they believe in Jesus. They followed apostles. They prayed with apostles in Acts chapter 1. And then on, Acts chapter 15, James stood up. James is the brother of Jesus through Mary. So now it seems that not only they believe, but they grow, they grew up in their faith and serve Jesus as well. So that's a uh, blessing to see uh, family at first uh, resistant, hesitant, or even uh, antagonist to Jesus, but eventually they, they uh, believe in Jesus because they saw him died. They saw him crucified, died, and buried, and they saw him alive. Praise be to God for that. Mm. 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 <laughs> yeah, well, it's an eventual behavior of people when uh, when they see their children growing up and become a leader like uh, who you're my child you're my little child there's uh, knowing them grow, uh, so uh, seeing them grow up uh, looking upon them taking track upon them as they grow up and then suddenly they they assume a role that's something some people could not accept that or some parents could not accept that because they they see the they look at those those adult people as still their children, their baby. So uh, I think it's a human behavior. Uh, if you are you grew up side by side with a person, and then that person becomes a a leader of the land, you'll say, "How how can you become a leader of the land that we grew up together? Uh, you cannot do that, or you cannot do. It. We we know you, so there could be some hesitations or doubt." 
because they saw Jesus and it's possible for him, a poor carpenter's son, to be a messiah, a uh, preacher, a teacher. They didn't go to school. It's so expensive to go to school in their time. They have to pay the synagogue, the Talmud. Uh, so they were homeschooled and uh, they were taught with skill, but they were surprised. How come this man have authority? The, the people from his hometown were surprised. How come this man have, have words of authority that he, he is a carpenter's son? And same thing with the, the brothers and sisters. Like, you're my brother. You're my, you're, you grew up with me. You, we ate the same plate we 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 the huggle with the food we you you understand what i mean so faith is something not not uh looking at things and understanding things faith is uh you are casting your belief on what is the truth you accept the truth in spite of looking at it and seeing it, it's it doesn't connect it's not it, it's not logical but truly it is truth that jesus is lord he became flesh his messiah he died for us and praise be to god for that even john john already proclaimed the messiah the coming but he doubted he even questioned are you the messiah yeah, right, that's Pastor? yeah, that's true. Uh, because in that time, John possibly could be frustrated in situation. He was imprisoned for a long time, and his his uh, situation uh, didn't change. wasn't elevated, even though Christ is popular. Christ is popular, so it's a, a tinge of frustration. There, there will be a point in our lives where. Yes, we are so excited in our faith. We are excited to serve God. But when problems, trials, or, or a, a, a very troubling event in our lives, that could lead us to doubt. I hope not, but we are human beings. And, and sometimes our enemy use that to, to give us doubts or to give us hesitations on trusting God. Uh, can you explain the word? the phrase he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he understandable heaven is a place for uh those who are next to god people who are next to god it, it's heavenly it's holy it's uh majestic so the least of the person there in heaven maybe the quietest person there in heaven or creature there in heaven is nothing compared to us here because we are finite we are wretched we are sinful we are in this evil world so heaven is a better place but it's just a a uh, teaching of the lord jesus christ that even the nondescript people people who has no reputation but if they believe in god they uh, trust in the lord they that call upon the lord shall be saved to god they are precious they are heavenly bound, and if they are in heaven, they are precious to God. Even they are here on earth, not 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 reputable, not uh, famous, but with God, they are honorable, because they gave glory and honor to God when they live faithful to God here on earth. Thank you, Pastor. Um, though John was great he was not born again under the new covenant uh, the word of God is very clear whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved so I, I believe John believed in the Lord Jesus Christ because he, he declared behold the Lamb of God who take away the sins of the world he cast his faith upon him uh, he he listened uh, well, there's some episodes where he was doubting, like this this passage we read. But I, I, I firmly believe that Christ Jesus recognized his faith and recognized his ministry and his service to God in, in this passage. So he's, he's uh, a child of God. He's called, appointed, and sanctified 
to experience our great God. So I think he's a child of God. Uh, he, he, even though he he uh, died before Christ was yeah. crucified. That's, that's the question, yeah. but that's, even that, though that's why... Christ, yeah, but, but in spite of that, uh, whoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So like Elijah or Elisha, those uh, servants of God who cast their faith upon God as God and Savior and Deliverer. And that's that's what God desired, faith. So I, I, I firmly believe, looking at the passage, that Jesus recognized the faith of John. Uh, it's just sad that he didn't see the, the finished work when Jesus crucified and on the empty tomb also. Mm, yes. Uh, um, he was hoping to see everything that would, would transpire in the life of the appointed one, Christ. But, you know, it's appointed to man wants to die. In. So there's an appointment of death for each and every one of us. And it was that time for John the Baptist. Uh, Pastor, uh, regarding uh, going back to Jesus, uh, I remember a verse. It says that no prophet is recognized in his own place or in his own country. So the main reason could be can be that during Jesus' life with his family or in, in Nazareth, that the sin of unbelief that they don't recognize Jesus as, as God. Uh, we could say familiarity. Because his his uh, consanguinity, uh, consanguinity or affinity to them, that they would say, "How can you be God when you're born and you're with us, you live with us?" It, it the familiarity, when uh, too much familiarity would would also uh, clout our mind or our faith uh, on uh, on God. So uh, that's. Possibly a, a reason why they, uh, yeah, they, they could not believe in Jesus at that time. Because they see him as man. They don't see him as Christ or an appointed one. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Morning, Hello. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Tatay. Uh, yes, uh, Mary Chris. Tatay was saying something, Pastor. It's okay. Ah, okay. Tatay, Tatay Nards. Uh, you know, Pastor, uh, you just stated a while ago, I beg to to clarify the things that you said that whoever calls the name in the Lord will be saved. Mm. Um, we must remember and be careful that. Uh, in the book of Matthew on 721, I said, not everybody that said, Lord, Lord, cannot, in, cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven, uh, except that anyone had that who do the will of the Father. Because there are a lot of people who said, um, uh, Lord, Lord, like um, so there are a lot of preachers now that you would think, I mean, I have emphasized that the other day that they are false teachers because they're also saying lord lord but their teaching is different they're not even uh uh mentioning that they are about sin it's only about prosper prosper things coming from god they're not even mentioning jesus but they're saying lord lord now that is well, the thing that I have been emphasizing that not everybody saying, saying Lord, Lord will be saved or will enter into the kingdom of God. But uh, it's true that when we say that those who are um, embracing the Son of God, Christ, will be saved. I agree on that. Okay? That is on my your friction, Pastor. Thank you, Tatai. Thank you.
um, you know, calling and just saying the word Lord is two different things because calling a task of recognition of who you call. Um, if you call in God, maybe a surrender, who you call. But there are people who just just profess, Lord, 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 but there's nothing in the heart. Remember in, uh, in Romans chapter 10, uh, with the mouth and with the heart, those two places in our lives that could attest that we indeed are, we cast our faith. With the mouth, we, we speak about Him. And with the heart, we believe about Him. So those who call are the ones who believe or the ones who, who cast their faith upon Jesus, our Savior and Lord. So that's uh, what we refer in the Old Testament people who call upon the name of the Lord and will experience salvation in God because uh, they call, they recognize Him, God, the Savior and Lord and the Almighty One. And I uh, hope that uh, will help us understand that calling is not just saying the words, saying His name, but believing in Him as God. Thank you, Tata and Arts, for clarifying that. Uh, Mary Chris? Hello. Good morning, Pastor. Good evening to um, the rest of us. And um, I just wanted to share something today, no? That uh, it's really, it's really our faith and our belief, and beyond that, that really is satisfying to the Lord. The Bible already answered us, no? Here to put in Matthew eleven four, when Jesus answered and said to them, "Go and tell John the things which you hear and see." So when when the those Messengers now, are you coming? Are you the one that we are um, waiting for? Well, sometimes we, we look for things, we, we look for signs, but Jesus' answer was very clear here. He did not say, I am the one, right? He just said, go and tell John the things which you hear and see. So I guess for us, reflecting upon this as um followers of Jesus Christ, no, do we have the fruits of the Spirit that He has empowered us to have? Will someone who will um, look at us or will someone that we minister morning, to... Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Oh, sorry. Believe that we are Believe that we are really children of God by the fruits that we bear. This is really very enlightening, ba? That Jesus did not say, I am. Just go and tell John the things you've heard and seen. So reflecting upon all of us, not everyone who calls Jesus Lord, Lord will truly enter the kingdom of God because not everyone who profess bears the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and this is where we should be really praying and focusing and meditating on his word because eventually, if you really have the seed in your heart, it will just grow and you will have fruits. Is this something that we all agree upon that a believer, a child of God will eventually grow in his love and care? This is his promise. So Molang Siguruni, I can really just share that we have to it's better to start in a good footing than we just believe that we know. We have to really be convinced that we are children of God because the fruit is we are bearing fruits for him. And um, that's all I can share. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Marcus. Let us pray. Father God and Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this uh, uh, golden opportunity for us Christians. This is, this is the, your will that we have to learn more of your word from your servants, Lord. Um, as a believer, Lord, we have to, you must be understand that we have to not just be a listener of the word, but we have to 
study more and learn more of your word uh, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit that is in us. And it's very, very important that we have to reach out to those people who we know that we don't have Jesus. Because that is the prompting of the Holy Spirit that is in us to share the word in order to be saved and they had to embrace Jesus as their only Savior. And uh, thank you, Lord, for uh, giving us this opportunity in spite of the pandemic that we are uh, experiencing right now. But it, uh, it is saying that in every adversity, there is a set of an equivalent benefit. We are in the midst of problem, but yet, we use this as an opportunity to study on your word. And this is, uh, I believe, uh, this is your um, guidance to us, to us people, to us believers that are continuously uh, following you. Thank you, Lord, for uh, the life of Pastor Wilmer and the life of Pastor Earl who are uh, mentoring us, guiding us, and even the presence of Pastor Ronnie Dwellin, uh, who is uh, sacrificing their life together with hope in serving you in spite of the uh, adverse uh, condition of the place where they are in on, on serving you, Lord. Bless them, O Lord, and bless each and every one that is present right now, their families, and uh, even their daughters and their, their sons and uh, in everything, Lord, we depend on you. And thank you for all the things that you have given to us, this provision, uh, not only in uh, physical need, but most of all, our spiritual needs. And I pray all these things, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank, you. thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good morning. 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 Good